So are there any questions from those who have uh, decided to come in early here? There is a, uh, a question from Nancy, um, because before Steve was here, we mentioned that Steve was probably out checking his bird feeders. And Nancy is curious if you have a feeder you can recommend or a feeder you like the best. The feeder I liked the best was a triple tube feeder that was long enough to fit 24 finches on, but the squirrels would massacre it. They, uh, <laughs> any so, of those with the, the, the plastic, um, the squirrels chew apart too easily. And the second favorite is a bottle feeder on a platform where they go and grab it out of the bottles. Again, the squirrels get to it, but by having a platform feeder that allows the uh, birds that like platforms like cardinals and uh, morning, morning doves, doves and, juncos. and juncos and titmouse uh, uh, yeah. to come and, and grab things. And that's where the safflower is uh, in that mix, along with sunflowers that are not hauled and both stripe and non-stripe and yeah. black. Yeah. He gravitates toward tube feeders. Um, just simple tube feeders where the, the shells and stuff fall off the bottom. They're not protected um, by themselves and they do get, the tubes do get chewed up. So he offers food to the squirrels too, it is uh, as a sop, you know, please stay over here. Don't come over there. And just now I have a, for Christmas, got a, a camera feeder that I just hung up, but so far uh, it says nothing yet. And that yet I've seen birds on it. So I, I'm pushing the wrong buttons. <laughs> to hook it up. <laughs> the phone says it's hooked up. <laughs> yeah. So he has a favorite platform feeder, and that platform feeder we made from a, a book called uh, "How to How How to House Feed How to House Feed How to Attract House and Feed Birds in Your Yard." It's a feeder we made ourselves, mm -hmm. um, and I've had for a long time. Um, uh, I I like watching them, and the it's not a huge. Too platform two feet across maybe two by two yeah maybe yeah. with with a gallon jug we use glass at we'll show them another yeah time. i don't think we can sorry that um, okay we, got, uh, we, have, we have some new we have some new ones we thought would be real favorites they're squirrel proof with mesh uh with mesh with uh, uh, a metal grid around the outside and the birds can fit through but the squirrels can't but um, somebody didn't design it very practically because the tray on the bottom keeps inside this cage keeps getting filled up with seed and it gets wet because the water doesn't drain through well. Yeah, the way it should. Yep. Um, so we'll we'll, uh, we'll we'll have to report on a bunch of them at some point. Um, Carol had sent a chat to you earlier. She was just saying that um, she had said she would share a photo of a plant that the cat. Uh, and a cat that had eaten the plant, but she hadn't heard back from that friend yet. So I think she just wanted to let you know that was the. Oh, okay. The and anytime you can send send in pictures. And um, thanks, Carol, for remembering that. I saw Carol at the Waterford Library on Wednesday. We were planning, plotting uh, how to avoid Boy, losing our garden to construction. Yeah. And uh, Carol and I were talking about, well, anyway, things that get into your plants. Where's where is this, Steve? Where's this picture? Quincy. At Quincy. Oh. I can't remember looking up at that angle. Oh, oh, when we were walking up to the... Oh, um, you could thing. see the dust on the camera. Sorry. Yeah. Well, now everybody um, can see the dust on the camera. Well, that's why I got it fixed. I couldn't... We've, we've got a, a hand up from Nancy. Okay. Let's go, Nancy. Um, there we go. Good morning. Good morning. I have a nephew who planted a butterfly bush uh, a couple of years ago as a small thing. And they found that it's been falling over this year. Um, and when they looked in the ground, cause I thought maybe there was girdled roots and they said, no, the roots are spreading out like they're supposed to, but they're noticing the, the dirt keeps getting washed away from underneath the shrub. And they have a lot of water in their, on their property. They have a lot of clay. And I was wondering uh, what we can do so that that stops happening. The only thing that I came, came to mind for me was um, doing a raised bed around it. But I was wondering if there's something else. That's uh, you're you're on the you're on the right track. I think that's the best bet. Butterfly bush likes it dry. It grows, it grows on mine spoils. It's, it's probably it's, one of the reasons why it's loose. It's a plant that can be used to reclaim 
things that soil that's nothing but slag, but they don't like poor drainage. And probably what's happening is it's got stringy roots, adventitious roots heading out to the side that are shallow, but the lower roots are rotting. Quite often the crown rots on butterfly bush when they're in moist places. I so know there's, it. there's different colors, but clethra and itea would go, yeah, can go in that wet area and just maybe help soak up some of that moisture rather than adapt the bed. Yeah. There may be other options. Yeah. It, um, Usually when you put things in that take up a lot of water, they're fast growing big things that you've got to watch out in the shade, but uh, in terms of the Oops. shade that they, you can leave it there, and the shade that they um, produce. But uh, we noticed in a, in a client's yard, we couldn't figure out why the arborvitae, which normally like moist soil, and it was a heavy moist soil, why the arborvitae was starting to fail, realized that the big, big elm two houses over had been taken down. And that elm was taking a thousand gallons of water an hour out on a hot day. So yeah, you can put something that's gonna use the water, but then you have to watch out for the shade aspect. Yeah. So depending on how large of a space he has, maybe have him put like a birch tree cause, or a willow, cause they suck up yeah, um, the water. Yeah, um, a, one of the birches would work, probably yellow birch. You want one of the wetter birches than the, uh, white birch tends and, to like the, yeah, the river, river birch. River or is it a beach? Which one? Oh, like beach water? won't go. No, don't put oh. beach in wet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. yeah. yeah a bir uh, and, river, and river birch. River, river birch, birch, not white birch um, for that. Willow too. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're sure. welcome. Sure. All right. This, okay. this, this picture is up because Terry sent it to us this week asking about boxwood leaf miner. Since we were talking last week about how leaf miner gets into the boxwood leaf and by pruning this time of year and removing the everything that you've cut off from the garden you can get rid of some of those miners she asked if this was minor and certainly on these leaves there is um let's see there were two pictures there we go there's some minor damage um uh we'll point to our I'm, good one here i'm having a hard time this one see, and yeah. right here right there yeah there's a spot where there's a an orange orangey yellow kind of um pale area in the leaf. And that's where a miner is working inside eating. But a lot of the damage or the discoloration on those leaves is probably from something smaller. Um, see the little tiny dots all over on the leaf here you know, there. and there. Um, those little bitty dots are probably, and you can see them more on, there's almost speckles on this leaf right here. Um, those are, that's probably from mite Quite damage. Small. Oh, I forgot to make the pointer bigger. Ah, ah. Um, mite damage is they're they're sucking on the ins on the leaf during the year during the the summertime, and they're they are encouraged by dense, dry interiors. Dense, dusty conditions are great for mites growing well. So you want to thin that boxwood out if you haven't been making thinning cuts. Make thinning cuts, and a couple times a year in the spring and early summer. Walk up with the hose and, and give it a strong shower so that you get water all the way into the middle of the plant. And that'll help keep your leaves looking better in the in the wintertime. Um, was there another question, Sonia? We ran yeah, out? there there was, and one that people are interested in the answer to. Um, Barb says that uh, she's looking for recommendations for good trees to replace uh, the Bradford pears at the street easement. Our subdivision pears were practically destroyed with a snowstorm, but they made it through the ice. Yeah, Diane, Diana, I was talking to last night, um, said that her Bradford pear, calorie pear, it's one of the calorie pears, one of the ornamental pears, split right in half um, during the storm. And, and that's what they do. Um, I, I love service berry. If you want a spring yeah. blooming tree, and unfortunately, people think of service berries as being clump, multi-stem. They're not. You could get, you get a stem. single stem service berry, and they are beautiful trees. Small trees, uh, you know, um, 30, 35 feet, like a calorie yeah. pear would be. And, and it flowers at uh, roughly the same time, same color. Uh, calorie pears are being banned in a lot of areas now. Uh, I, drove and, past, and, I drove past an, uh, an area there at South Boulevard and I-75, where there were some had seeded themselves across mm -hmm. the road, and now it's just a thicket across thicket. the road. I don't think I would yeah. want to even try to walk through that area from all the seedlings coming up. Yeah, so. What else besides service berry? Um, <laughs> So I should note that, um, yeah, yeah. Carol has very kindly dropped in Missouri Botanical Gardens uh, site on uh, or page on native alternatives for Bradford's. Yes. And there's about 20 here. 
Um, so that link is in the chat uh, as well. But um, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt uh, with your recommendations. No, that, Jen. no that's great. That's no, great. some days uh, those trees that somebody asked, well, what do you think? It pops right forward. Uh, other days it's yep. somewhere. Sergeant cool. Cherry is another one I would think of putting yeah. out there. So. And if not, um, the late, what's the one that the uh, that scholar tree. Real late scholar, scholar tree. tree? Yeah, scholar tree and Sephora. Um, and they're probably on the list. And, and yes, Stratford Pears, Gallery yeah. Pears have become a real problem. A real, real uh -oh. problem. Uh -oh. Actually, a, 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 um, Sephora, the, uh, that was not on the, the list. Um, so if you wanted oh, to oh, say that one out loud. Okay, good. Sephora is called Scholar Tree, Sephora Japonica. And it is not, uh, it's not a real common tree at nurseries, but it doesn't bloom until August. It blooms white. It's, um, it's a tough tree. Uh, those in the Detroit metro area will know Eight Mile uh, Road is a boulevard highway. Uh, east west across the whole town, a very heavily traveled street, and in the boulevard in the middle, in several places, there's great stands of Sephora's there that are put up with everything and do it on nothing. Nobody waters them, nobody takes care of them. And um, anyway, so and and can I know good just because I was checking for the um the spelling, it looks like one it's one of these ones that Wikipedia says it used to be in Sephora and now oh, it is yeah, that's right. And it's got, stiphnolobium. Stiphnolobium. Yeah, stiphnolobium. Yeah. Sorry. Um, I think you'll still find it under both names. Sephora is S O P H O R A and stiff stiphnolobium. <laughs> S T Y P H, right? Yep. 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 S T. I'm going to drop in the chat now. Um, but just because when I Googled scholar tree, I got businesses rather than the actual tree. So I thought I would uh, mention the the actual. Uh, interesting. Uh, you know, what else is interesting? This reminds me that we have a friend who's a taxonomist. I won't use his name right now because I'm not telling I haven't told him I'm telling the story. But uh, so he got a Ph.D. in name and not nomenclature or in his specialty was plants. So he's a scientist who specializes in naming in the proper names of things. And he said, I am cutting it off um, for 20 years after they changed the name of a, of a genus. Books list both of them for a while. And I figure I've only got another 20 years and I all learned my set of plants and I'm sticking with them. <laughs> it is hard when they changed. Uh, back when I was getting my degree, we our, our teacher was talking about it. He, even he was having trouble. So no, go ahead. With remembering the names. Yeah. Okay. We're, uh, we're um, next time, so we need. Mary, yeah. Well, oh, okay. quickly on the on the Bradford pear. Um, Mary just says, would a red bud work? Yes, red buds make yes. good street trees, except, and I think we've got a picture up of a red bud here, except that they are not the sturdiest trees. If uh, if you've lost a tree to ice, to set a red bud out in there is a little bit like putting a, a goat on a tether. Um, yeah, saying come on certain, in, dragons, yeah. come and grab this uh, this tender, juicy goat here, this tender, juicy red bud. Mm -hmm. 